What's up, you guys? Welcome to Anatomy of Us podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is my wife, Melanie Studley. She is a power coach. <laughs> I'm a power coach. You're a power coach. That's right. And uh, it's been a minute, you guys, so we're super excited to dive right back in and to bring you the resources that's going to help you, your marriage, and your family. And uh, we love what we do, and this is awesome. So first, I wanted to uh, talk to you quickly about the Power Couple Planner. You guys, we have sold so many of these, and they have helped so many couples Get on the same page with everything, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, with intimately. With their kids, with their family, With all their that. kids, with date night. This is the planner that you need, Power Couple Planner. Go to anatomyofus.com forward slash planner or Power Couple Planner to get yours. I promise you, it'll change your life. It, it organizes all of your stuff, which is amazing. So, all right. Melanie, how you doing, girl? How's mm-hmm. it feel to be back on the mic? It's great. Great. Awesome. I was here last week, so it's not that big of a deal, but yes, it's great. Well, we've done some individual shows, and now we're back together, which feels We're back together great. while we were separated. We weren't separated, guys. I went on a... It is hunting season, so I've been gone for 90 days, so... I'm a hunting widow. Someone said that the other day. Oh, yeah. That's a thing, mm-hmm. which is interesting. I think it'd be sound cooler if you said you're an elk widow. Ooh. Sounds like... That's, that sounds... Uh, sounds creepy. Now you're getting into, like, spooked territory. Blurry creatures. Yeah, blurry creatures and stuff. So, you guys, thank you again so dear much. Dear woman. Yeah, dear woman. Keep on. All right. So, today, we're going to talk about one of the most powerful books that I have read all year in 2023. Before you say that, I found that book, and I sent it to you. I just yes, have to take did. credit for that. Yes, you did. Thank you. Well, you found you found the lady, right? And the book. I and shared the book. the book. I did right? all the things. You can't take credit for I'm not taking the goodness credit. of my heart to you. Keep I'm taking on. credit for reading it <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> and doing a show about it. No, when I say this, I am very serious. This is one of the most powerful books that I have read in 2023. And if you look at our bookshelves over here in the studio, it's full of books. So we read a lot. And I don't know what happened. Melanie just left. But she's getting a chair. Anyway, this book is called Adult Children of Alcoholics. That's right. Adult Children of Alcoholics, written by Janet Geringer Wojtitz. She has a funny last name, Wojtitz, Wojtitz. But this book, you guys, at first glance, it's like, okay, he's going to talk about alcohol again. No, as a therapist, as a licensed mental health therapist, after reading this book, I've read it twice, and then other, I've written other, read other offerings from her, I am learning about the concept, the phenomenon of adult children of alcoholics. Now in grad school, I heard of this literally like 15 years ago and never really thought about it. Like, okay, that's just another book. Sure, the professor says to read it out of a billion other books that they said to read. I'm right. like, okay, that's a, a smart concept. That's that's great. But again, this book, Adult Children of Alcoholics, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to fawn over it because it has made that's gigantic impact. A what? That's a trauma response. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to woo over it. Fawn. Fawn. It was a joke. Okay. I was joking. But anyway, I have recommended this book to almost every therapy client that I have seen since I've read this book and almost every high-performance marriage coaching client. Mm-hmm. Why? Not only is it amazing, but it helped me understand myself, my family of origin, my relationship to Melanie, my kids, all kinds of stuff. And this isn't just another, okay, Seth or Melanie – just read another thing. Great. Okay. Now we're gonna have to hear about it because they like it for the week or something like that. No, this like has the power to explain, had the power in my life to explain a lot of ways that I think. And I'm super excited to go over 13, mind you, 13. I didn't tell you that. Mm -mm. 13 tenets of the book. And I'm going to briefly talk about those. And then I'm going to talk about how they may be misdiagnosed. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think it'll it's going to be like a from a, a, a clinical uh, perspective here. <clears throat> but to to preface that in therapy, you know what I'm talking about, Melanie. Mm-hmm. There's this hint thing called a genogram. Mm-hmm. Familiar with that? I am. What would you liken a genogram to? A uh, family tree. Exactly. So remember in first, second, or third grade, they had you do a family tree, which, you know, grandma was over here and grandpa and uncles and all that stuff. It's a tree and you're a leaf and blah, 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 and you get to color, <laughs> right? So a genogram is a clinically in-depth version of that, Mm -hmm. right? So it starts with you. And if we have a little, maybe, I don't know, Instagram people, if you could throw an infographic up of a a genogram, uh, men are represented by a square, females are circles, right? So in us, um, I'm a square, a straight line to Melanie means we're married. And then our three kids drop down below that. And then it branches off into Melanie's side, 
her siblings, her mom, dad, her grandmas, her grandpas, her uncles, her aunties, all that stuff. And you can get really in depth in mm-hmm. that, right? Same thing on my side. So in graduate school, to get familiar with the genogram, I we had to do our own, right? And I got this big we've giant sheet of paper. We've done episodes about the genogram. Remember? Yeah, we've done episodes. Yeah. I don't know what number, but they're they're interesting nonetheless. And in my family of origin, uncles, aunties, grandmas, cousins, grandpas, there were, I would say, 90, almost 95% Mm -hmm. alcohol or drug affected. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Drugs or alcohol or some substance had parts in their life, Mm -hmm. right? And impacted their like relationships, their relationships, not of course themselves Mm -hmm. and their other relationships, their jobs, their, their careers, their their everything, their life. Right. And who was calling us on a world famous podcast? I cannot uh, I'll give you this. one guess. No, uh, alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're doing construction stuff, and uh, which is another super exciting story. But anyway, we might get calls during the show. So when you do a genogram, you can highlight, okay, divorces, cutoffs, how relationships were. It highlights in a c- very condensed version everything about you and your family of origin. Mm-hmm. So by saying that, 95% of my family on both sides were drug affected or alcohol affected. Do you think for one second, that that is going to have implications for me, how I see myself, how I see you, and how I see our children. Yes. Yes, of course. So, enter this. This is why this book is so important. And this is by no means saying that, oh, great, you know, my mom was drinking all the time, my dad was drunk or on drugs or something, my life is ruined, this or that. It is not meant to be gloom and doom, nor is it meant to Mm self-diagnose right there's too many people that you know every wife or every husband who watches a tiktok on narcissism goes my wife's narcissist Mm -hmm. right and that is like armchair diagnoses which is not cool right so do not do yourself a disservice by this right so adult children of alcoholics and i'm just going to go through and you shoot in anytime you want right but i'm going to talk about uh um the, t- the tenants? Yeah, the, and there's like, there's like 13 tenants in say here. say something really quickly before mm-hmm. we dive into the tenants that the reason that I thought to find, so I found her YouTube video from 1983. Yeah. She had a video that someone posted on YouTube um, about adult children of alcoholics, and it came about, I don't even know if I told you this, but my best friend is a pediatrician, and she had to do extended like education credits, mm-hmm. and she, one of them was about ACEs, so right. adult childhood um, or adverse childhood effects. Or experiences? Experiences. And she had done a thing about ACEs. And so she- an ACE score is a questionnaire that when you go to a therapist or a doctor, just like the GAD-7 or the, um, oh shoot, uh, PHQ-9, that screens for anxiety disorders or depression disorders or um, uh, personality disorders. Mm-hmm. The, ACE, the ACE score is adverse childhood experiences. So if you score high on the ACE score, that means that you have more than li- more likely than not some sort of uh, PTSD and or unresolved mm-hmm. stuff, right? Yeah. It's just so, something to be aware of. Yeah, so she and I had been, she had just been sort of talking about what her day was doing this ACE. She had to learn more about ACE scores and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then she talked about addiction. And she was like, yeah, you know, when you're in your relationship with Seth, you have to know that he has high ACE scores. And I was like, mm. weird. I had never even, it never even crossed my mind. Right. And then that is what led me on this journey of like, finding her YouTube mm-hmm. thing and then finding her books and all of that. So I just thought that was a really interesting mm-hmm. connecting the dots and why community mm-hmm. is important. Cause so she's the one who helped me out with it. I had one client sitting in my office last week and I was like, Hey man, you ever heard of this? I showed him this book right here. And he's like, no, let me take a look at it. And I was like, you should read it. And he just looked and read the things that I'm going to talk about. And I promise you, he was like, holy expletive big time. He's like, this is me. This is my life. Mm-hmm. Right. And to give clients a tool that can help them open up stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and, and I'm not talking about like in the, in the spiritual context, like we are Christian, we believe Jesus died and rose and everything and he's our savior. I'm not talking about in the, uh, like when I say something like this book opened up a lot of keys for me, people might be like, well, the Bible should do that. You should do that. <laughs> okay, come on. I'm not, I'm not saying that. So don't, don't get it twisted in that way. But what I am saying is clinically, oftentimes there comes along resources that go, 
that thing mm -hmm. helped me unlock that thing, mm -hmm. right? For me, I can uh, point back to the Miracle Morning book, mm -hmm. which also you introduced me to. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And then the writings of Stephen Pressfield mm -hmm. unlocked it for me, right? As, as well as this. And the Bible for all you people out there. Wait, no one said anything. <laughs> you said it. You're talking with yourself. I know, on this I know. One. I'm just I'm, arguing with yourself. I like some drama sometimes. Okay. So, anyway, okay. Uh, this book asks um, remember, this is a conversation. Are you an adult child of an alcoholic? Hmm. And if you may not be a direct child of an alcoholic, if your grandparents were an alcoholic, then your parents were children mm -hmm. of uh, adult children of alcoholics, which mm -hmm. also may have adverse effects on how you were parented, how you were raised. Okay. There's an epigenetic, so, com epigenetic component epigenetic, to right. this. So, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind if you know what that word means. Okay. Number one, adult children of alcoholics. Guess at what normal behavior is. Hmm. So I want you to just speak into it from your own life, of course, um, to a degree, but then how you have seen that in our relationship and how you have also seen it maybe in other clients. So number one, adult children, I'll, I'll call them, uh, I'll just call them adult children, right? You know what I'm talking about. Adult children guess at what normal behavior is. For such a long time in our interactions, I had to guess just what normal was. Mm -hmm. When you were sad, when you were happy, when you were a lot of things, basically had emotions, which you have those, <laughs> right? Um, I'm like, I don't know what to do with those. It kind of felt out of control. If I wasn't like leading with the emotion and you came with something, I would be like, oh, and I remember one story very specifically. My cousin, we were, we were, it was around Halloween time, I think. And we were probably, I don't know, maybe nine or 10 or something. And, uh, this was probably in the eighties. So like face makeup for Halloween was probably, probably like had oh, yeah. toxic Lead. ooze in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And she got some in her eye. Right. And she was just wailing, crying. And I was just like, I didn't know what to do. I emotionally did not know. Let me get a washcloth. Let me get some hot water. Let me wipe it or, or help you yeah. in any way. I was just like, uh, I don't know. Good luck with that. I hope you can deal with it. Right. And, I, and I, I, I don't know why I remember that specifically, but I just do. So that is, mm, okay, so I can't just throw these out there without saying some reasons why. Yeah. Maybe because your parents um, were too busy uh, affected by drugs or alcohol, and they did not know how to emotionally comfort you or emotionally empathize or sympathize with you. So you may have not learned that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. For, again, feel free to add anything you want but to. But you keep talking. I can't add when you just keep going. You say to add, and then you talk over me. All right. <laughs> that was a funny face that you were making. I was but thinking. I want to, you were making a really funny face. So it says adult children of alcoholics guess at what normal behavior is. So there mm -hmm. have been many times, and I've actually heard this from friends of ours who I know are adult children of alcoholics and grew up in similar mm. uh, behavior or similar homes. And again, it doesn't, again, it doesn't mean that your parents were like, you know, downing a ton of alcohol every day. It could be that they came from homes where their parents did that. Mm -hmm. So the epigenetic component of raise, being raised by parents who didn't know how to tune. So I'm going to reverse a little bit. When people turn to drugs and addictions happen, it shows us that there's a coping strategy that isn't healthy there, mm -hmm. right? So if I get angry and I punch you in the face, which I have done, um, that shows you and me. Adult children of face punchers. <laughs> right. It shows us <laughs> that um, that I had a lack of coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. I had a like a deficit somewhere, you, you right? You missed a a, a skill or, or mm -hmm. you were too flooded to even, yeah, I just didn't, didn't know, know how to do. handle it. Well, mm -hmm. so that is part of the, the biggest, one of the biggest factors here is that if you're raised in a family where, ad, where addiction and abuse, drug abuse, whatever is anywhere in your history, that tells you that somewhere in that family is a lack of being able to mm -hmm. cope well with stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've had friends and you say, I don't even know how to feel normal. I don't even know what normal is. I don't mm -hmm. know how to feel calm I don't know how to whatever and they're guessing at it because they never saw it and right. so if that's a feeling that you have felt before start seeing how much of this applies to you and again you'll feel that because you didn't receive it as mm -hmm. a kid you don't know what it's like to just like watch cartoons on a Sunday and not worry right or have anxiety and, or whatever mm -hmm. and again so on a personal note my parents are have been sober for a very long time most of their life most of their mm -hmm. life right most, yeah so 
I'm not saying if <clears throat> if you go, oh, great, my, my dad was alcoholic or my mom. Now I'm even more mad at them and I'm just going to be pissed at them no. royally. OK, let's let's don't let's don't go there. I want you to hear the thing. First of all, I want you to go get this book and dive deeper into it. If this applies to you and hear the things that we're talking about and go, oh, that is a point of reflection that I may need to dig deeper yeah. into. Yes. Right. So yep. as a growth, because me and Melanie were talking about it earlier. A healthy marriage has to consist of what? Two healthy people, Mm -hmm. right? We can only be, our marriage can only be as healthy Mm -hmm. as the worst mental health person here, Mm -hmm. right? Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm not, I mean, I'm not pointing at me like Mm -hmm. I'm the worst mental health person, but there have been times in our relationship when you weren't doing so well. Right, yeah. You weren't, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think our marriage was as strong as possible? No. No, it wasn't. Why? Because you were having a hard time. Mm -hmm. Same thing with me. Times I haven't been doing well, but... On the direct converse of that, when we both are doing well, mm-hmm. thanks to the power couple planner, hello, <laughs> how's our marriage? How's the state of our marriage? Yeah. Which equals how's the state of our family? Mm-hmm. It's better. Yeah. Number two. All right. ACOAs, adult, adult children, children of alcoholics. alcoholics, have difficulty following a project through from beginning to end. <laughs> That's a big one. That's my life in being married to you. W- yes. Which is fine. The, well... To a degree, but that can, so I said I would also talk about how this can be misdiagnosed as well. Mm -hmm. That one can closely resemble ADD Uh or ADHD, Mm -hmm. right? Which the research is bearing out now isn't just some organic problem like I can't focus and I need a medicine to make me focus. It is a result of uh, behaviors. Mm -hmm. It is a result of possible trauma to where, oh, wait a minute. I, culmination I, of, I have to focus yeah. on other things and mm-hmm. I'm getting labeled as ADD, ADHD, right? Um, and it is a, um, uh, a, a could be a product of und- undiagnosed anxiety, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but in the ACOA context, um, they have difficulty following a project through from beginning to end because what do you think is modeled? When people are drug and alcohol affected, Mm -hmm. mom comes in, hey, she's in a good mood. The book talks about this. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, there's a cycle of um, uh, alcohol intoxication. It's a little different with other drugs, but specifically with alcohol, it's like, okay, you have two or three drinks kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're feeling good, right? She calls that, I forget the clinical name, but it's basically the upswing of we're feeling good. Oh, let's go. Let's yeah. let's have. Oh, dad is fun mm-hmm. right now. Mom is fun right now. She he he or she is in a super good mood. They promised me to. They promised to take me to the go kart track today. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that's really fun. And then oh, guess what? Two or three more drinks. You kind of get you get that high. You peak, and then you start going down. Mm-hmm. Right? You get sleepy. You get irritable. Anger starts coming out. And then the promise that sounded good an hour ago right. is broken. Oh. We're not going. Yeah. What dad promised? This is weird, right? So, but you get used to it. You become you get, acclimated. As you become a acclimated kid. of like, oh well, that's just what mom does. Dad or, or mom really doesn't do what they said they're going to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I don't have to either. Like mm-hmm. this project sounds cool, drunk or not drunk. This mm-hmm. pr- this project, this thing sounds neat and cool. Okay, let's go, let's go. Ah, kind of lost interest in it. Mm-hmm. So that's where you can see it's it has a lot of crossover with ADD kind of mm-hmm. thing, and um. Yeah, with well, with and ADD. they call ADD. Just side note, there's a really great book by Gabor Mate. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's called Distracted Brain or something. Mm-hmm. And he talks about a ADD being attention deficit disorder, attention as in you didn't receive enough attention oh, in right. your relationships, mm-hmm. and that creates this like spiral of behaviors. And of course, it's very mm-hmm. multifaceted. We're not saying anything about that, but anyway, it's it's a interesting thing to factor in in a great book. Right, ACO number three, ACOA's a lie when it would be just as easy to tell the truth. And this one was really interesting because in drug and alcohol affected families, when one partner is drug or uh, is, is drunk or high or whatever, Mm -hmm. the other partner, the mom or dad has to make lies Mm -hmm. to cover up for their bad behavior. Oh, that, you know, the wife calls into work. He's sick again. He can't come in. There's lies. Oh, why did you crash the car? A deer ran out in front of me, Mm -hmm. but you actually, didn't you know yeah. you, you ran in the ditch mm-hmm. um why did dad go to sleep so early or why did dad get mad and leave oh well he was stressed or whatever yeah, it is right yeah. so this pattern of making excuses and to cover up to, to cover up mm-hmm. bad behavior kids see that mm-hmm. and i really grew up that way right. right kids see that and it's like oh just 
just look over here rather than here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which is really interesting. And then uh, Janet talks about how as adults, like there's actually nothing to lie about. Yeah. And I have one friend who grew up this way and the lies he told was just like mind blowing. And he probably still does it. I don't really talk to him anymore. Mm -hmm. You know him. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just, what is going on? This is just like bizarro world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that one is really interesting. So they lie just as when it is just as easy to tell the truth because they are trying to keep some sort of make believe pretend status quo. Yeah. Right. You're mm-hmm. like, you're not going to get mad at right. that. Which again, if you look mm-hmm. sort of downstream of this, how it affects you in your marriage and your relationship is you may not have had you know, maybe it was your grandfather that was alcoholic and then your mother was raised in that home and she doesn't have those coping strategies or those communication skills. So then you inherit Mm -hmm. this like weird desire to white lie around things. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you find that you're doing that pattern in your marriage and you can't, you can't, you hardly can identify it for yourself because you're so acclimated to Mm -hmm. it, but your spouse can't make sense of it. And it just hurts. Everyone hurts. Their feelings are all hurt. So again, trying to really like look at these symptoms and go, man, I wonder if this is something upstream in my family Mm -hmm. that I should be looking into. And it definitely is upstream. It's not just people just don't wake up and go, yep, my mom or dad was a raging alcoholic and, but their parents and their parents and their parents we're completely fine and normal. Right. It just doesn't yeah. work that way. You and I were having a conversation mm-hmm. yesterday around maladaptivity mm-hmm. in relationships and just in your yourself and then also like highly competent people. Mm-hmm. That just doesn't happen. Like no one wakes up and go, tomorrow I'm running a marathon and my finances will be perfect right. and our relationship will be golden. That is impossible. Mm-hmm. Nor does someone go, tomorrow... I'm going to stop going to my job and I'm not paying any bills yeah. and I'm going to start using meth yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> that just doesn't happen, right? I don't think most people plan on using meth. No, no, <laughs> unless you're addicted. Man, I whew, I had a client last week. Oh my gosh, scary stuff. But anyway, meth was involved. But anyway, um, I'm saying that because uh, these things happen slowly, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. think about like in the process of compounding interest, both mm-hmm. negative and, yeah. you know, you can put $10, start a bank account in $10 when you're two years old, by your 30, you're good. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, little patterns that you learn from, from your parents and mm-hmm. they keep on going and going. Mm-hmm. By the time you're 30, you're like, why am I on my second divorce? What's going right. on? Because they were never paid right. attention to. And the to. most sort of nefarious patterns are the ones that you can't even see. And a lot of this mm. adult children of alcoholics most of the patterns are hidden so deeply within your family of origin that they're like, uh, they're practically the foundation you're walking on. Mm -hmm. So you can't see that. You don't look at the subflooring of your house. You look at the tile on top of it, right? Right. Oh, that was cracked. But it's the subflooring. It's the, like the stuff underneath that. Or it could be the whole foundation, like the foundation, the earth is moving kind of thing. So, okay. Number something. I don't know. (laughs) Next one. (laughs) Next one. Uh, ACOAs judge Mm -hmm. themselves without mercy. Ooh. That's a big one, right? Mm-hmm. So they judge themselves more harshly than they do others. And this is just kind of my own theory. I don't remember if Janet talked about this, but because you can say, okay, you saw a lot of dysfunction, you know, in your mom or family or grandmas or whatnot, you can go, I will never do that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then when you may end up doing similar traits or losing your stuff or yelling at your kids or whatever, because you said, I would never do that, mm. And you did that. However, you didn't have the tools in the first yeah. place to not do that. Mm-hmm. You go, I am a failure. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. that's sad. Yeah. That's really sad. I think too often, uh, in addition to that, that a lot of kids in that environment didn't hear that they were enough. Right. They didn't hear that they were enough. And also young kids, just like we see with divorce, like after divorce, kids think, oh, it was my fault. Mm-hmm. Oh, dad drinks because... I got a D in math. Mm-hmm. Dad drinks because I made him mad. I, 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 I spilled my drink him. on his favorite, who knows mm-hmm. what, you know, rug or shirt or, or couch or something like that. Oh, if, if I wasn't such a bad kid, mommy wouldn't lose her mind all the time mm-hmm. and have to drink and do crazy stuff. Right. right? So that's really interesting. And that kind of gets deep into childhood stuff, mm-hmm. which all of it goes back to childhood. Yeah. Okay. Next one. ACOAs have difficulty having fun. Ooh, that's mm-hmm. interesting. Right. Mm-hmm. Because, If, and these, there's degrees of severity to everything, right? Like some of the stories in this book, like 
mom and dad were just really, really bad. Like, you know, eight, nine years old, kids would have to run the house yeah. because mom or dad would just go make money, mm-hmm. come immediately home and already be drunk mm-hmm. and yell at kids. And, you know, they would have to take care of younger siblings and all this stuff. So they didn't have time mm-hmm. to grow up, mm-hmm. right? Like this, this robs kids of a childhood, robs them from certain degrees of innocence and then makes them have to grow up because mm-hmm. when you're a kid and you see things like that, what is your choice? Mm-hmm. You're like, well, the option to just sit here is not an option. Yeah. So yeah. I have to do something. You know, my, my three-year-old sister's over there crying. Mm-hmm. Mom's not going to get up. I have to do something, mm-hmm. right? So then you grow up and go, I don't know how to have fun. I take everything so serious. Mm-hmm. And then get in trouble. Why are you so serious? You can't even have fun. You're mm-hmm. like, if you only knew what was going on in here, right. you might understand, right? So that's one. Well, and I think, too, that you can have the, you can kind of pretend to have fun. I think also, though, inside, mm-hmm. it's like being able to relax and be like, oh, this is actually fun. Like, right. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a particular person who, like, can put the facade of fun on, can yeah. put that mask on, but inside is still, like, kind of in turmoil with it's themselves. Still, yeah. It doesn't feel normal. It's still, like, you know? bubbling underneath the surface. Yeah. Well, let's name an area because I, I, I've, I've been very contemplative lately, mm-hmm. and it all started with the Google House thing that you got, right? Oh, yeah. The Google Home It's the thing. Nest Hub. Nest, right? And you put a zillion just family photos on there, mm-hmm. right? And it's... Of from like our... A lot, like from when our kids were little to Little, current. little from our vacations to just pictures in the yard when it snowed with dogs. Nice pictures of us, of family and stuff. And it, this... I mean, our oldest kid will be 16 next month. So it's literally like 16 years of, mm-hmm. of a time capsule photos, right? Mm-hmm. Of just... Fun stuff. Everything. We're smiling. And guys, I highly recommend that. Great idea, by the way, Melanie. I highly recommend it because like it has made me just look at those pictures on its and it's on random, yeah. you know, sitting above the kitchen sink. You see it when you're making coffee or doing whatever. And I'm like, wow, we have a lot of awesome memories, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and it just changes your whole perspective. So it's awesome. What? Why did I say that? I don't know. Contemplative, having fun. You were gonna say take oh, themselves no, very no. seriously. So, so I wanted to just name two instances where I have really had fun and enjoyed everyone in the family. Oh. Mm-hmm. Like sharing wins. If you don't share wins in your friend group or your friends or with your spouse, you need to do that. Just share a win. A win yesterday was well. First of all, we went to church. You sang at church. We loved seeing you sing at church. That was awesome and beautiful. And then we went to dumplings as a family after that and it was just a chill fun sunday it was a win and another time that was super fun was the mariners game that we went to oh, over the yeah. summer that was just it was a blast it yeah. was something new the family it was awesome so Got those were two eighteen dollar hot dogs <laughs> yeah, yeah i know right twenty dollar beer <laughs> this is like a thimble cup <laughs> it was crazy but uh so i know i put you on the spot but mm-hmm. just name a win like a fun family win that was recent it's hard because i think well oh recent yeah just recent. oh well i'll say recent as in a few years ago i just immediately what popped in my head to my head was being on the london bridge oh, with wow. the kids and we laid on the glass because it goes through the you know mm-hmm. you can look down all the layers of the thing and mm-hmm. that's one that popped up that's in that you know we're on the glass taking the picture in the mirror mm-hmm. on the ceiling and then um uh just all the beach photos i know that's not yeah. kind of what you asked me but uh, and also playing like Uno with Hattie mm-hmm. lately and playing, what was it? Sassy Uno or <laughs> oh. <laughs> that our friend taught me at church. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, spicy so, Uno. Spicy Uno. So the the point of that is if, if you're an ACOA and you have difficulty having fun or taking things too seriously, just look back like at, at some recent blessings, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Your wife, your kids, your husband, whatever. And now that our kids are almost 16, I'm like, dang, that absolutely flew by Mm -hmm. it absolutely flew by so that's crazy so okay next point is they take themselves very seriously which of course is directly correlated to um not being able to have fun so because they had to take themselves Mm -hmm. seriously if they didn't then everything was just a Mm -hmm. like chaos or whatnot Mm -hmm. right so you had to like okay the rubber meets the road here and then if you start that at a young age you're just going to grow and progress to like oh man i can't like you know you touch their shoulders and they're like lead they're like solid you know yeah well and i think too a lot of kids who grow up in homes like this have had more responsibility than they should have at a very young age whether that's Mm -hmm. the responsibility of managing the emotions of their parents who didn't Mm -hmm. know how to manage their emotions so they that's why their parents drank they end up having these like 
you know, attempting to have adult level coping skills for the adults around them right. when they shouldn't have had that responsibility. And so it's this, what is that called? The parentification of uh-huh. children. Mm-hmm. So it makes them just, it's, things are serious when that's what you're up yeah, against. It's called the parentified you know? child where the child has to take on parent like right. roles and responsibilities. Which is what my mom had to make dinner for her, all of her brothers and her dad, which yeah. was like 10. And I, mean, I guarantee that. that you're, I mean, I don't know your, her, her father, but mm-hmm. there had to be alcohol and stuff mm-hmm. in that. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of things you know? like that in yeah. that generation of people. And this too. isn't uh, specifically isolated to alcohol or drugs. It could be domestic violence. It could mm-hmm. be emotional abuse. It could be sexual abuse. It could be uh, loss. It could be war. Mm-hmm. It could be PTSD. It could be anything. Yeah. Right. To but me, again, this, yeah, really does feel like it's any ACE. It's any adult or any adverse childhood experience. You oh, could almost like just ab- merge them together. But what's absolutely. the next one? Okay. Uh, next ACOAs have difficulty with intimate relationships. Mm. Intimate relationships. Mm-hmm. That one's big, huh? Mm-hmm. So what do you think? I think that that goes back to not having a, an appropriate relationship of even just being able to be a kid Mm -hmm. like a healthy balanced kid that didn't have to deal with like coping with parents that are fighting all the time or like again if it was a grandparent that was an alcoholic and you're raised by parents that just saw that and epigenetically have that inside of them they're good they're not going to let you be a free Mm -hmm. happy fun loving kid Mm -hmm. who can explore and be whatever like that's just not there and so they don't learn Mm -hmm. They don't learn it because they don't see it modeled. They don't right. see the that, that's what I was going to say. Healthy so conversations and, the, and healthy strategies for dealing with conflict, like with conflict resolution or mm-hmm. healthy communication or a dialogue that is just normal. Yeah, I'm going to say an example of a family that we know uh, closely is it someone our family. Yeah, you your family. Oh, okay. So <laughs> like there wasn't again people who struggle with addiction have a tendency to have sort of poor choice making skills because that that's a reason you get into addiction and that's a very blanket statement and Mm -hmm. i don't mean that to be unkind because there are a billion ways to become addicted to something Mm -hmm. so don't hear it in a bad way but if you chose to start using recreational drugs and you chose to start drinking alcohol there was there's some decision making things happening there and then that messes up your ability to make decisions and so even when you become clean and you're sober you still don't have all of the sort of abilities to have these healthy conversations mm-hmm. in a balanced way. Mm-hmm. You never learn the skill, all of that stuff. And so I think that you grew up in a home where two former addicts, again, they mm-hmm. were addicts when they were very young, like teenage mm-hmm. years. Um, but they didn't, they didn't, don't have a robust, healthy ability to talk about differences, to talk about how to create a strategy mm-hmm. around a difference or communication that just doesn't happen. There's mm-hmm. a, there's explosions. Think about it repair. this way. Think about it this way. Say, um, okay, the normal thing, the normal thing in life in the world is to ride a skateboard with both feet. Yeah. Right. So that's just the normal thing. That's what everybody does. That's healthy. Right. And just go with me on this yeah. scenario. Um, however, okay. I, I, I see other people riding skateboards. That's cool. My foot is broken. I've never ridden a skateboard yeah. before. My foot is just destroyed. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's been in a cast for three years, right? Um, I really haven't even tried to ride a skateboard. Boom. My foot is healed now. I have two feet. I can put them on the skateboard, but I don't know how to ride it. Yeah. Understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Just because you have the ability to yes. doesn't mean that you know the skills. How. You don't have the skills. I have the ability to go to space. Right. <laughs> Yes, Anybody you do. could. A monkey went, right? Uh, they shot a monkey up in the Bugs thing. went. <laughs> B- bugs? Yeah. Stowaways. Send bugs to space. A jar of honey went to space. Mm, okay. Science. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because you have that ability doesn't mean mm-hmm. you have the, well, skills. number one, it doesn't mean you have the skills or you know how, mm-hmm. it wasn't modeled, all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So that can be, I want you to look at your relas- your intimate relationships. Yeah. And it just doesn't mean like, like sex intimate. It means right. close yeah real Mm -hmm. relationships that could be with your best friend with with your own parents Mm -hmm. you know with your co-workers with your children oh that's a big Mm -hmm. one i want to add something with that too with the skateboarding analogy so i tried to snowboard like two years ago and got massively injured yeah and what felt what would feel completely safe and in control to tough for example our 14 year old kid snowboards like crazy he's so good at it Mm -hmm. he what feels like easy to tough Mm -hmm. would feel terrifying to me right absolutely terrifying and uh, and worse because i was injured ah, like i literally like mm-hmm. broke my not broke my tail but, but like fractured my tail bro- bone 
So getting on a, if I were to get on a snowboard now, it would be even scarier mm-hmm. than the first time I got on. Yeah. Cause you have, you have deep reservations. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. like, I'm going to hurt my But foot. what, yeah. What was, what is a no brainer? Tough doesn't even have to think about it is incredibly challenging to me. Mm-hmm. Like I can't even do it. Challenging. Right. So think about that in context with spouse relationships. Mm-hmm. Why do you always slink away when I try to touch you? Why do you always, cause I'm a worm. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, I don't know. A what I'm, uh, why do you, uh, f- you know, um, distance yourself when mm-hmm. I try to pursue you emotionally or physically? Right. Right. Because it scares the hell out of me mm-hmm. and I don't know what to do. Right. right. Because it wasn't modeled or whatnot. So I have the desire, but I don't have the skills. Right. And right. that is deeply, deeply frustrating. Mm-hmm. Right. And this is all just in context. We're not saying everybody's messed up and everybody's parents are alcoholics and you're ruined forever. No. Uh, knowledge is power, right? And this can be some keys to unlock some of the things you've been struggling with. All right, next point. Uh, ACOAs overreact to changes over which they have no control. Mm. Mm. Now, let's think about this one. I think I... um, So, okay, I'm going to translate it. Some people blow things out of context and get real butt hurt when they feel (laughs) out of control. Yeah. Right? What is it? The ju- is it just them being an idiot, or you can't even handle changes? Why are you so rigid? What's wrong with you? No, it goes back to oh, wait a minute. For a kid growing up in this type of environment, no control yeah. was normal. Mm-hmm. No control was like I can't control my adult mom. I can't control my adult grandpa or whoever this is. When I want to go to sleep at a normal time, and they're partying and yeah. like knocking on my door and raising mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I'm out of control, right? So as the ACOA grows, they go, okay, they're going to go either like away from control Mm -hmm. and perpetuate what they grew up with or go, I'm going to hold on to everything. I have to gather this in. Why? Number one, it helped me survive. Mm -hmm. Number two, it helped me stay sane. Number three, no one else is. No one else is. So who's going to, somebody had to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So when ACO is getting in relationships and they feel out of control and like change and stuff like this, Mm -hmm. they feel a deep sense of panic. Yeah. Now, again, I am generalizing here. They feel a deep sense of panic and seemingly get butt hurt of Mm -hmm. like, but it's a really big deal to Mm -hmm. them kind of thing, right? But I'm going to use different language that it feels, I think for, Again, we've had clients like this. We've known friends like this where when they can't control every element of either a different person or a situation, they begin to panic. There's like this internal panic of um, if, if I don't control it, it will all fall apart, which could very well have been true in their childhood. Well, it was, but, it was very true in their childhood. Right, but yeah. in their adult relationships, maybe their marriage, it isn't true, but they can't. It is again, it's a part of the foundation. It's the it's the floorboards beneath the tile of their kitchen and mm-hmm. they can't figure out they, it, they almost can't identify it they can't figure it out and it is deeply frustrating to the person who's doing that right and also hurtful and um confusing to the person who's receiving that very confusing to the person who is receiving that you know aka a wife or husband because they may think or say my husband is so controlling and he's so rigid and he just has to have everything mm-hmm. his way Okay, yes, there may be aspects of truth in that to where he's just kind of a jerk and Mm -hmm. like my way or the highway, no matter what, and opposite for the wife too. Or it is a response to how they grew up, Mm -hmm. right? There were certain people in my family who were massively controlling, not in a, we're doing this, but the literal travesties that she experienced go, oh, that's why. Mm. Oh, and if yeah. we know about it, mm-hmm. guess what? Yeah. I can empathize with that yeah. deeply because I'm like, oh, she's controlling and wants mm-hmm. to do this because she f- effing yeah. bombs were dropping. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And and there was alcohol and PT. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. oh, if I know that, then I can look at you mm-hmm. as a as a with with sympathy with empathy yeah. with like oh my gosh pl- yeah. yes oh hello. and that doesn't mean you that the saying? controlling behavior continues no right? that that's not mean, the goal but uh-huh. but it do, we do have to see we it is very helpful to get to the root cause of these things to begin to heal them yes yes so okay we're at, we're at, I'm gonna okay fine this might be a two parter <laughs> should we do, should we just call know. it a two parter we should we could wrap this one up and then make another one um, it's totally fine. Let's do it. Let's make it a two-parter. A two-parter. Okay. So, you guys, obviously, this is uh, super pertinent and cogent Mm -hmm. information to me and how I grew up. 
Hopefully it's important to you and will shed some light either on you and your behavior, your spouse's behavior, your in-laws, and will allow you guys to understand, just like the last point that I said, I'll reiterate this, um, uh, folks who uh, overreact to changes which they have no control, Mm -hmm. you can see those behaviors, not condone them, but understand them, right? Knowledge is power, clinical knowledge is power for sure, and go, oh, this is a part of a conversation where we can grow and heal of that thing that you've been doing forever and we've had a million fights over, now I know why that's so important to you. Now Mm -hmm. I know why you do that. So that is our hope. That is my hope in explaining the ACOA Mm -hmm. book. So I want to say something else. Don't, don't just leave. All right, go for it. Trying to leave. Um, and I will say too, like in my family of origin, it's very similar where there was like, kind of like in yours where you were talking about your grandma has gone through Mm -hmm. crazy stuff. You didn't say that, but that's who you're talking about. Like she literally lived through the war and bombs and, friends dying from bombs and stuff and you can see why she would have this desire to be hyper controlling Mm -hmm. right um and the same thing in my family where uh the experiences that my mother had as a young kid made her go no one has got my back Mm. i'm going to control all of this and again if you think of an adult child of alcoholics no one's got your back No one's even looking out for your younger siblings. No one seems to care. Mom and dad don't seem to care. And even if they did care, they do the wrong thing anyway, right? Mm. So you you develop this like almost like a defeatist, like everyone's out to get you. Everything's going to be bad. It's all going to fall apart if I don't hold everything together. Mm -hmm. And what we see happen again with friends and clients and in our own relationship is that 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 quote unquote holding it all together, number one, it isn't real. Like you can't hold everyone together. You can't, you as one person cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's going to damage your relationships. The ones that you value the most are going to probably be hurt the most by not identifying and releasing them to a degree, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I just wanted to say that like in my family, my mother was never addicted to anything. She was not ever, never smoked, never drank alcohol, nothing. But I inherited that like if I don't hold it, if I, I have to, whatever. And I, and I had to work on that for mm-hmm. you and I. Mm-hmm. I used to be way more controlling mm. of what I thought was okay for you to say or do or how, when you should be home or whatever. So again, I'm just saying that because we inherit these things, even if it wasn't the experience. I did not grow up in a home with alcoholics, but I did inherit some of that um, trauma mm-hmm. that m- was something my parents experienced, right? So again, it's worth kind of looking in your family tree And saying, wait a minute, like this, these people did have alcoholism or a huge trauma or abuse or whatever. And do these things apply to me and to my family? That's right. Um, And again, it's the Adult Children of Alcoholics by Janet Geringer. Wojtitz. Wojtitz, E.D. Um, Mm. It's very good. It is good. So you guys, hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. I'm going to read the points that we uh, just went over. Quickly, I'm going to reiterate and stay tuned for show number two on this because I got like maybe six more points. So adult children of alcoholics, guess what? Guess at what normal behavior is. ACOAs have difficulty following a project through from beginning to end. ACOAs lie when it would be just as easy to tell the truth. ACOAs judge themselves without mercy. ACOAs have difficulty having fun. They take themselves very seriously. ACOAs have difficulty with intimate relationships. And lastly, ACOAs overreact to changes over which they have no control. So if any of these are you, I would highly encourage you to check out this book. Also, guys, go check out the Power Couple Planner. You can go to anatomyofus.com and search on the planner. Uh, Click on all the resources that we have there, the clearing structure, um, uh, five steps to the best sex ever, all kinds of stuff. You mean 20 questions? 20 questions to the best sex ever. (laughs) And uh, the the best thing that we got going is High Performance Marriage Coaching Show. So uh, click there. We'll have a conversation to see if that is right for you, if you want to change your marriage for 2024. So, all right, guys, we'll see you soon. All right, right, thanks. bye. Bye.